Hello again, my friends. How are you? How have you been? I am your friend, the reader, and I come to you today with the story of a forgotten tragedy. But first, I'd like to ask you a question once again. What was life like for your grandparents? Did they grow up happy? Do they fondly recall their childhood? Or was it more difficult? Did they experience loss? Tragedy? What historical events have they lived through? And more importantly, what have they survived? Our story begins in the familiar place known as Ask Reddit. This time under the discussion. What are some dark events in history not many people know about? Naturally, many of the replies were shocking and disturbing. There were stories of corporations and businesses risking the lives of millions, only to have their crimes swept under the rug. Historic events that were often told much differently, like the execution of Mary Queen of Scots. However, one reply stood out among the rest and revealed a heartbreaking story many would not soon forget. The New London School Explosion On the afternoon of March 18th, 1937, the shop teacher at the school in New London, Texas turned on an electric sander. Unbeknownst to him, there was a massive natural gas leak under the school. The sander sparked, which ignited the gas, and caused a massive explosion that killed almost 300 students and teachers. It was absolutely horrific. The force of the explosion was so great that a two-ton block of concrete crushed a car parked 200 feet away. This event is actually why natural gas has a smell now. They started adding it after the explosion so that something like this couldn't ever happen again. My grandfather was actually one of the survivors of the explosion. He never talked about it, even to his own family. So I didn't really know too much about it, other than the fact that he'd survived until after his death. Toward the end of his life, he'd suffered a series of strokes that left him pretty physically incapacitated. So my dad had given him a voice-activated tape recorder and suggested maybe he could record his memoirs for his grandkids to listen to someday. As it turns out, he did. We have hours and hours of cassette tapes of him telling the story of his actually very interesting life, including a big section on the New London School explosion. For the sake of everyone's privacy, I'll call my grandfather Papa and use an initial for anyone else. Papa was in 8th grade when it happened, in his English class about 3 p.m. on a Thursday afternoon. At the beginning of class, Papa and his buddy T had been messing around and being loud in the back of the classroom, as 8th grade boys often do. His teacher, Miss M, had enough of their disruptions and made Papa switch seats with another student. He moved into the girl's desk in the front row, and she moved back into his desk in the back of the room. When the school exploded, they were taking a test on the book Ivanhoe. Papa was knocked out for a short time, and when he woke up, he couldn't see anything because the dust was so thick. He looked down and saw that his pencil had blown clear through his hand. When the dust cleared, he saw that the whole back of the room was gone. I won't go into details, but there were bodies and parts of bodies everywhere. The students in the front half of the room survived. The students in the back half of the room did not. That included Papa's friend, T, and the little girl who had been forced to take Papa's desk because of his misbehavior at the beginning of class. If he hadn't been acting up, he would have been killed, and she would have lived. He carried the guilt of her death until the day he died. Papa's classroom was on the second floor. There wasn't any way to get to the room other than the open cavity of the explosion. After the first few seconds of initial shock wore off, he and another classmate jumped into action. 
They were the only two kids in class who hadn't been badly injured. They made a tourniquet out of a sock and a shoelace for a girl with a severe injury to her arm and dug out their teacher, who was alive but badly injured. By then, men were running up underneath the hole, so Papa and the other boys started lowering the injured to them. Then, those who could walk, including Papa, climbed down. He ran off to look for his older brother, B, to see if he was okay. As it turned out, B was supposed to be in his geometry class. However, he and his buddy had snuck out to go fishing. The explosion happened as they were opening the door to head out to the parking lot. The force of the blast sent them tumbling head over foot across the lot. They were both banged up and dazed, but they survived. The rest of the geometry class was killed. I don't know that there's a moral in the fact that both my grandfather and his brother survived because they were misbehaving that day. I do know that it weighed heavily on both of them for the rest of their lives. There's a lot more to this story about the day and the aftermath. Most of it absolutely horrific, but I won't go into it all here. A few small tidbits though. Papa and the boy who helped him rescue the other students from the classroom were both awarded medals and certificates of valor for their actions that day. Nearly every family in town lost a child, some, all of their children. I'm sure you can imagine the extreme toll this took on everyone's mental health. Papa described New London in the months following the explosion as a town with no children. To help with the healing process, the oil companies actively recruited families with kids to transfer in so that there was some sense of normalcy when school started again in the fall. Papa had played French horn in the school band. However, when school started up again, he was asked to switch to trumpet as the entire trumpet section had been killed. A few years later, my grandfather went on to fight in World War II and he saw some of the worst conflict in the Pacific, including Peleliu and the liberation of Manila. But he said that nothing he saw during the war was ever as bad as what he saw the day of the explosion. I'm always amazed that more people don't know about it. It was major international news at the time. A true nightmare come to life and this Redditor's own grandfather lived to tell this heartbreaking tale. In the split second it took to ignite the motor of a belt sander, hundreds of children and school teachers were gone. Hundreds of families' lives were changed in an instant. The soul and spirit stolen from the heart of New London, Texas. According to reports, of the more than 600 people in the school at the time of the explosion, only 130 escaped without serious injury that day. As reporters arrived to cover the event and devastation in a journalistic capacity, they were pulled into the rescue efforts, with responders telling them helpers were needed far more than reporters. Legendary broadcast journalist Walter Cronkite was also at the scene for one of his first assignments with UPI. Although he later went on to cover some of the world's most devastating stories and even the aftermath of the Tet Offensive in Vietnam, he said of the New London school explosion, I did nothing in my studies nor in my life to prepare me for a story of the magnitude of that New London school tragedy, nor has any story since that awful day equaled it. The Redditor went on to edit his comment to include some additional details. Sadly, his friend T's family blamed him for his passing and never forgave him for the loss of their son. There were many stories of students switching seats similar to Papa and T, including a story of a boy who switched seats with a friend so he could sit next to a girl he liked. His friend and the girl both passed away after the explosion. Papa would struggle with PTSD from both the explosion and World War II throughout his life. However, the Redditor also chose to end things on a positive note. And therefore, I'll do the same. 
You want a happy story about him to help counter the explosion? This is a good one. At the start of World War II, while he was in basic training, a girl named Kitty sent her brother Keith a goofy picture of herself splashing around in the creek behind their family farm in Texas. The picture of Kitty caught the attention of Keith's bunkmate, Papa, who decided to write Kitty a smart alecky note of his own, jokingly criticizing her manners for showing her ugly bare feet in public. Kitty was not amused. She wrote him a scathing letter and received a very apologetic note from Papa in response. This began a written correspondence that continued throughout the war. Papa wrote faithfully from some of the most remote, dangerous locations in the Pacific. She sent him news of the home front and taunted him with descriptions of fried chicken dinners. He sent her pictures of crocodiles and told her of the orphan children he cared for after the liberation of Manila. When Papa came back to the U.S. in 1946, he made a trip out to the farm to see his old friend Keith and to finally meet Kitty face to face. That was on a Friday. They were engaged the following Wednesday and were happily married for over 50 years. Hello again, my friends. This is your friend, the reader. And I wanted to thank you for listening to this video, even though I've been gone for several months, even though I said I'd be more consistent. <laughs> I wanted to apologize. Um, you know, I'll pull back the curtain just a little bit. I started making this video and um, in February, uh, my grandmother passed away and it was just really hard to want to continue making this video but in a way I felt like I had to you know something about honoring the legacy of your grandparents just suddenly felt more important and uh, so this video meant a lot to me and I think about her every day and I think about the amazing life that she led and you know hug your grandparents because you never really know when your last I love you is gonna be you know what I mean who boy but in my time away I came up with a lot of different ideas for this channel and I'm hoping to be more consistent going forward you know, it's the craziest thing. Just the other day, I hadn't checked the numbers of subscribers I'd had in months, and then I look and boom, it's just exponentially grown since the last video, and I haven't put anything out in several months. So just the, the ground floor support that I'm continuing to get from you guys is insane. Um, I want to thank you. We're just about to hit 1,700 subscribers, and it's crazy, man. Um... And to everyone that's a brand new subscriber here and hasn't listened to my other video, this is once again my apology for the quality of the Spontaneous H video. You know, if, if I ever make it big and my technology gets better here, I will gladly make like a 25th anniversary, like better edition of the Spontaneous H video. Or if, you know, I can hire an editor one day to actually level out all the audio and speed me up a little bit. I am well aware of how poorly done that video was, but, you know, one day I'll do a QA and a and I'll talk about the making of that video a little bit. It was a lot of fun to do, but I am well aware it's my, like, least quality video. But onward and upward, you guys are awesome, and I want to thank you for listening to this video again and listening to me rant. Stay safe, guys. Take care.